Hey guys, this is Eddie the Magic Monk. Welcome to another set theory lesson. So far we have talked about a few different sets of numbers in our last lesson. So we have gone through integers, whole numbers, uh, natural numbers, uh, what else, real numbers. So make sure you, underst you have understood those different sets of numbers before moving on to this tutorial. So to start off today we want to talk about rational numbers. So a rational number is a number which can be expressed as a ratio of two integers. So let's define two integers as a and b. So a is an element of z which is the set of integers and b is an element of z and uh, a rational number is therefore a over b right because a ratio means the same thing as a fraction a ratio is just a fraction so a rational number is therefore a over b so what are some examples? 3 over 4 is a r rational number. Uh, 7 over 8, for example. Uh, any two integers you can think of. Negative 3 over uh, negative 11. Right, these are all rational numbers. Now what about... Uh, so let's do a quick quiz. What about is... 2.3 over 5.8 a rational number right is 2.3 over 5.8 a rational number now for for it to be a rational number basically the top number and the bottom number they both have to be integers so at first glance you would think Hang on a second, these are not really integers, they're actually real numbers, right? Because they have uh, decimal values. But uh, if you examine it further, this fraction, 2.3 over 5.8, see the keyword here, key phrase here is can be expressed as. So I can actually express this fraction differently by multiplying both the top and the bottom by 10 because you're allowed to do that with fractions. They remain equal if you multiply both the numerator and the denominator by the same number. So you end up with 23 over 58 in which case these are both integers so this does qualify as a rational number so the answer is yes okay so any number that can be expressed as a ratio of two integers is a rational number okay let's now go to irrational numbers which are numbers that cannot be expressed as an integer uh, a fraction of two integers so Let's do some examples of that. Now, an irrational number, which basically means a number that is not rational, uh, an example of that would be, for example, the square root of 8. Okay, why is that an irrational number? Because if you type that number into the calculator, you actually get 2.8284271 so have a look at this really long string of numbers okay this goes on forever with a uh, non-predictable pattern so if the numbers were recurring, so for example, if this was 2.82828282, then that could possibly be a rational number. But because there is no pattern to this, uh, 
and it does not terminate therefore this is an irrational number okay so square root of 8 is irrational now so there's some uh, features of these irrational numbers that is uh, non recurring and uh, do not terminate okay non recurring and do not terminate okay so recurring numbers are actually rational numbers right why is it a rational number because if you think of recurring numbers like 0 0.33333 right 0 0.333 now what's hap what's happening is that can actually be expressed as 1 over 3 right so 0 0.333 recurring is actually 1 over 3 right another example could be 0 0.444 now because the number stops it doesn't keep going forever you can just express it as 444 over a thousand and you can simplify it from there so these are all rational numbers an irrational number is non-recurring and they do not terminate okay uh, so now let's talk a little bit about the relationship between all the numbers that we have talked about now so how many numbers do we have so far we have natural these are from last lesson by the way we have whole number and then we have integers and then today we talked about rational numbers and irrational numbers and last lesson we also talked about real numbers and uh, now I'm going to use a symbol for these so if you guys remember natural number is n whole number is w integer is z now the rational number symbol is actually q alright the rational number symbol is q and uh, don't ask me why today because I'm not sure uh, irrational number uh, some people use the symbol I for irrational but because sometimes I gets confused with integers I'm gonna use the symbol Q complement right Q dash because Q is rational irrational is anything that's not rational so you can just use Q dash and real number is uh, obviously R now here is a Venn diagram that is going to describe the relationship between these numbers so remember a Venn diagram is made up of circles that define the uh, boundary between the sets so I'm gonna have the smallest circle inside this universal set of numbers as natural numbers n right because natural numbers they have to be whole numbers and they also cannot include zero so n is the smallest and then the next biggest set of numbers would be w which are whole numbers because whole numbers include all the natural numbers plus it also includes zero and then we have integers which are include all the whole numbers plus all the negative whole numbers right because remember whole numbers do not include negative numbers so then the next uh, biggest set is i and then we have outside of that we have 
Q, which are rational numbers. Okay, so integers are only a small subset of rational numbers. Right, because rational numbers includes all the integers. Any integer is a rational number. Plus, rational numbers also include some decimal numbers and all of that. And then on the outside, we have real numbers. Okay, so this is a universal set of real numbers. And within real numbers, we have rational, irrational, whole, and natural. And what is the other thing we have missed? We have missed Q dash, irrational. So I'm going to put that on the outside. All right, because uh, Q dash is not part of Q. Okay, Q dash is outside Q. So these are all the irrational numbers and the whole box that includes everything is called real numbers. So you can also express the relationship this way. So you can say the set of natural numbers is a subset of whole numbers. Right, you can say whole numbers is a subset of integers and you can say things like natural number is a subset of integers, uh, rational numbers is a subset of real numbers and so on. So the inside circle is a subset of any of the outside circles. Okay, so that's the relationship between numbers. Now, the last concept I want to talk about today is set builder notation. Set builder notation. So what is set builder notation? Well, let's say that other than these sets which are already defined, these common sets, let's say we want to define our own set called X. So we want to define our own set and I'm going to call the set X and I'm going to make X all of the numbers, the set of X such that X is less than 10 and X is an element, X is an element of uh, integers. Okay, so how is this notation useful? Oh, basically, this is a lot easier to write than doing, for example, 10, 9, 8, dot, dot, dot. Because if you do that, then we're not sure when you're going to stop. Okay, are we going forever? Are we going to zero? Are we going to one? So by saying that it's part of integers, we know that this set of numbers is an infinite set. Okay, and it goes on forever. Okay, so another example could be we define a set called K where K is smaller is bigger than 15 and K is real. So what does that mean? That means all the real numbers that are bigger than 15, so it could be 15.001, 15, 16.28, so we've defined another set of numbers using a set builder notation. And we can also draw each of these using a number line so if we have x is smaller than 10 we can have uh, 7, 8, 9, 10 and we just draw some solid circles at each of the scales and we draw a little arrow on top to indicate we keep going forever and I actually made a little mistake the circle at the number 10 has to be hollow because we don't include 10. 
Okay, and uh, k bigger than 15, real numbers, so we're gonna have 14, 15, 16, 17. And we're going to draw a hollow circle at 15, and we're gonna draw a solid arrow going across. So that is the um, number line for this set. Okay, I hope you guys have learned something new today. Uh, about set theory. See you guys next time.